Hey there. In this video, we're going to talk about an application of uh, exponential functions. Uh, there's one big one, uh, radioactive decay, how they date uh, ancient artifacts. Uh, but the one we're going to look at is a different one, and this is um, interest compounded uh, at a certain rate. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So uh, suppose we invest a principal. That's the a principal is the game is the name is the, it's the name of the game. It's the it's the name in accounting for the money that you initially invest. All right. So the principal is invested in an account which earns interest at a rate r compounded annually. Then after t years, the amount in our account is given by what? Well, let's see if we can figure this out. All right. So let's. Um, Let's just imagine first that we invested just $500 and earned a whopping 10% interest. Okay, so um, suppose we invest $500 and earn 10% uh, interest. Okay, well, how do we compute our, our earnings, our total amount of money uh, after we've earned that, that percentage? Well, we're going to take our initial investment. Right? And we're going to add to it 10% of it. Right? So how do I compute 10% of 500? Well, I multiply it by the decimal form of this percent, which is 0.1. So I'm going to take 0 0.10 and multiply that by 500. So here I have my initial investment plus the interest that I earned on it. Now, one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor out the 500. Okay? So... Um, in that case, it would just be written like this, 500 times 1 plus uh, 0.1. Now, what I want you to see here is that if in general I invested some principal P and earned interest at some, um, at some rate R, what we're doing is we're taking the principal and multiplying it by 1 plus R, where here I'm viewing R as a decimal. And so this is what I want to point out here that this is the formula uh, that we're going to use to add you know, that amount of interest to our principal. And by the way, if you actually were to compute this out, you would get $550, right? Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at, uh, we're going to see if we can compute this, this amount for any time t, for any number of years. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a table we're going to look at various times and look at various amounts that we would have. So this is T measured in years. So if we don't invest the money at all, so in other words, we invest it for zero years, then we just have what we started with. We just have the principal P. And I, if I invest it for one year, well, then we have exactly what we just described in our example, right? In our example, we said that we're going to have P times 1 plus R. Right, so that is what we get if we invest it for one year. Now, what if I invest it for two years? Well, now I'm going to add interest to this. Okay. Now, if you think about it, how did we go from here to here? How do I earn our? How do I earn interest at the rate r? Well, I just multiply the amount of money I have in my account times one plus r. Well, now the amount of money I have in my account is this. This is my new principal. So to compute how much money we'll have in our account the next year, we'll multiply this times 1 plus r. And when I do that, I get 1 plus r squared. What about three years? Well, I'm going to take the new principal that I have, and I'm going to multiply that times 1 plus r, because that's how I earn r percent. So now we have 1 plus r cubed. Now, hopefully you can see the pattern here. After t years, how much money am I going to have? Well, you should be recognizing that this number is the same as this number. The number of years is the number of times I've multiplied by 1 plus r. It's the number of times I've compounded my interest. So this is going to end up being p times 1 plus r to the t. And that is indeed the formula that we get. That is for compounding annually, okay? So 
Suppose we look at this example. We invest $2,000 at 5% interest compounded annually. I want to know how much do we earn over various time periods. Okay, so what we're going to do to solve this problem is we are going to realize what our principal is. Notice that we invested $2,000, so our principal is 2000 What's the interest rate R? Well, it comes from this percentage here, but remember R is always represented as a decimal. So in this case, R is going to be 0 0.05. And so the expression that's going to give the amount in our account is going to be the principal 2000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 or 1.05 to the power t. Okay, so let's see what we what we get here. So at time zero, the amount at time zero, well, that's just 2,000 times this to the zero power. Well, if I raise something to a zero power, I get one, right? So it's just 2,000 times one, it's 2,000. And of course, that's what it should be, because I haven't let it sit for any period of time. It's not going to accrue any interest. Uh, if I let it sit for one year, well, I'm going to have 2,000 times 1.05 to the 1. right? 2,000 times 1.05 is uh, 2,100. Okay. What if I let it sit for two years? Well, now I'm going to have 2,000 times 1.05 to the 2 times 1.05 squared. And for this one, I get 2205. And what if I let it sit for three years? Well, I'm going to have 2,000 times 1.05 1 cubed, and we get $2315.25. And what if we let this sit for a very long period of time, what would it go all the way to 10 years? What do we get? Well, it'll be 2,000 times 1.05 to the 10. Right? And what do we get? We get 3257 dollars and79 cents. Okay. So notice what we're doing here. They call it compounded interest because we're actually earning interest on the money including the interest that we earned the previous year. So we're earning interest on our interest, and that's why it's compounded. Okay, let's go see what's coming up next here. Um, we want to consider compounding interest semi-annually. So in the previous example, we compounded interest once per year. Now let's see what happens if we compound interest several times a year. In this case, we're going to call it n times per year. n represents the number of times. Well. It, then if you're going to do that, a bank isn't going to charge, isn't going to compound the interest at the same rate n times per year. That's nuts. You're going to be getting a lot of money, right? That's like having it in, you know, say if they compound it four times a year at the same rate, that's like having it in for four years. That's, that's, they're giving you way too much money. So what they do is they divide the rate into, say we're doing it four times a year. They're going to divide the rate into fourths and then do it four times a year. So they're gonna do it four times a year at one fourth the rate. Or if they do it monthly, it's 12 times a year at one twelfth the rate. So let's see what happens when you do that. And so that's, that's what this is, is where we're dividing the rate by the number of times we're doing it. And then we're doing it that many more times per year. That's where we're multiplying the time by N, all right? So here's the examples we're gonna look at. Same example. We're going to invest $2,000, but we're going to compound it quarterly this time. Let's see what happens. And then we're going to do it compounded monthly. So let's see here. Um, if I look at the, the formula that we get here, it's going to be um, 2,000 times 1 plus. Now it's the rate divided by n. If I'm doing it quarterly, I'm doing it four times a year. Right? And I'm going to do that, I'm going to raise that to the power uh, four times t, because I'm, I'm, I'm doing it one-fourth the rate, 
four times a year. So this is my formula for monthly compounded interest. Uh, sorry, quarterly compounded interest. So what am I going to get for A of 0? Well, again, this exponent becomes 0, so this just becomes 1, so 2,000. What about A of 1? A of 1, um, if, uh, oh, there it is. I'm just checking my notes here. We get this. If you plug in 2 for t to compute a of 2, we get this. If I plug in 3 for t, we get this. And if I do it for 10 years, we get 32, 87, and 24 cents. This is quarterly. Okay, that's the quarterly rate. What if I do monthly? Well, that's 12 times a year. There's 12 months in a year. So, What's my formula going to be? It's going to be 2,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 12 raised to the 12 times t. Okay, let's see what we get here. Times 0, again, you get just 2,000, the initial investment. After one year, after two years, After three years, and after 10 years, let's skip ahead to 10 years, 32.94 and two cents. Okay, which is the better way to go? Compounding quarterly or compounding monthly? Well, I think you can see it's a little bit better to compound monthly. Okay, now is that the end of the story? Well, it turns out there's one other way of compounding to consider, all right? So let's take, take a look at a picture of what's going on, okay? So what I have here is I have a picture of the amount in the account uh, as we compound the interest. So um, here I'm just compound, I'm just investing $1, okay? Let's, let's do an interest rate of 20%, crazy interest rate, but just to amplify what's going on here, okay? And um, this is what happens if I'm compounding it annually. This blue line is our the amount in our account. So I start with $1, and you can see in the bottom, the axis is the number of years, and I can see my money grow, right? Now, if I increase the number of years, no, the number of compoundings per year, rather, look what happens. This curve changes. So here's, I'm compounding it one time per year, once per year. Here's biannually, twice a year. Here's quarterly, four times a year. Here's monthly, 12 times a year. Do you see what's happening to the curve? It's subtle, but the curve is increased. It's going up. And that's why our amount is more the more we compound per year. But what if I let this N keep going? What if I drive this N up and up and up and up? What if I even make it go to a thousand or a million. I just keep making that N. I compound a trillion times a year at one trillionth the rate. Notice that this curve isn't just going up and up and up. It's actually approaching some fixed curve. It's going up to here. What is that curve? Well, it turns out there's an expression for this curve, and it is um, given by E to the RT. This is the continuously compounded interest formula. So this is imagining that you're compounding interest every instant of time. This is what the how your money would grow. Okay, so that's what we're looking at here. Um, let me fix this. I left off something. I left off the P. Okay. There we are, that's better. Um, if we invest principal P in an account which earns interest at a rate R compounded continuously, 
then after t years, the amount in our account is given by this formula. So let's invest our $2,000 at 5% uh, compounded continuously. Okay. So let's see what happens here. Well, A of T is given by 2,000, that's our principal, times E, that's a number, 2.71828 dot dot dot. Uh, the interest rate is 0 0.05 T. This is actually the simplest of those formulas, right? Um, and if we do this, you'll have to find E on your calculator to do this. Um, we will compute the following things. So uh, at time zero, again, this exponent becomes zero, so e to the zero is one, so we just get 2,000, just like before. But let's look at these other values. Uh, after one year, after two years, after three years, And let's look at what we have after 10 years. And the question is, which is the best way to invest? Well, we have, this is the amount we get investing continuously. Compare that to the amounts that we had investing quarterly or monthly. And you'll see that the continuously compounded interest is the best way to go. By only, a, by only a few bucks, but it is better. And we could see that in the graph because the graph was just going up as we compounded it more and more approaching that continuous compounding. Okay, so that is it for these applications. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.